Hello guys, I am sitting here at Horicon Marsh with the Nikon P1000, which is exactly what I am recording in. I am here to capture birds in flight in photography. Not so much videography, but photography. Now, many people do not do birds in flight on this camera because of the tiny sensor and the relatively large amounts of noise, but we're elite now, so we can handle it. So, um, I know the autofocus on this thing isn't all that great either. Um, for tracking. I've actually tried it before. It's great for little birds that are perched, but we want to capture them in flight and we're going to see if we can do such. So, P1000, birds in flight. So there you see some birds across the pond, some geese as well as a coral mot. However, we're not really interested in those birds because they're not flying and they are easy to take. And since we are elite photographers, we only take pictures of difficult things. Oh, there was a bird that was just flying by, but I didn't get it. All right, so let's go on with birds in flight. So let's actually look at some of the photos I took of that group. This is the Coral Mott. This is P1000, um, 650 millimeters, 35 millimeter equivalent. This was far out in the middle of the lake, and I still got this much of it. Now the 650 millimeter equivalent of the Coral Mott, um, is actually longer than my 2 to 500 lens that I have my D750. Since I was actually shooting away from the sun, I don't get that kind of like noise distraction I usually get sometimes with a P1000. And this shot is actually fairly clear. To really see the noise, you do have to zoom in. And if you zoom in a decent amount, you can definitely see uh, some of the noise that's actually present. But if you don't zoom in, you can't really see some of the noise, any of the noise that's present. Like even at this zoom, you don't see the noise that's present. Um, but since you do have to do some noise reduction because of the smaller sensor, even at 400 ISO, which is what I took all these pictures in, it's really hard to get like decent shots of birds in flight. If not, you're not at least 400 ISO. And this was a pretty bright and sunny day. So you can see like, if you zoom in, the details definitely aren't quite as good as a full frame camera. There's some smudging because they did have to reduce the noise some in camera. By the way, is the P1000, is the only camera I actually shoot um, in JPEG, and I just use the noise reduction. I probably could get slightly better, slightly better quality if I use RAW and just reduce the noise myself, but it's a lot less work if I just use uh, NR in the camera, and it usually does pretty well. Uh, sometimes I will try to um, do 200, but with birds in flight, just trying to capture motion at 200 ISO, I can only do it at, on the brightest days, maybe one over 800, and that's just not a fast enough shutter speed. So this is the Coromot landing. This was at 650 millimeters. I would try to get it at, um, I, I actually try to get it at a higher zoom, but the thing with the P1000 is once you get past 7, 800 millimeter zoom, the autofocus is considerably slower. And once you get past like 16, 1700, the autofocus is quite slow. So it's very hard to focus on anything that's moving uh, very quickly at 3000 millimeters. The other thing about the P1000, aside from its tiny sensor, is you can't, per you can't actually program this AEL AFL button to be back button autofocus, which really bothers me. Um, this particular autofocus I actually had on manual spot, and that's actually what I, where I took how I took a lot of these photos. I did try subject tracking, but subject tracking re, um, required me to actually like hit this button down here or something to start subject tracking, and then basically have the AE lock so there's not a delay when I actually focus with when I actually focus and uh, take the snap, and that's just too long. The bird's usually gone by then or landed by then. It's very hard to keep, especially at longer focal lengths, it's extremely hard to keep anything in the frame that long. So I just switched to um, manual spot. It's much faster, and I was able to get more photos with it, and most of them are fairly in focus. So this is actually uh, 650 millimeters. You can see, you can get, it's pretty decent. Um, if, you're using, if you're using it on the web, definitely good. And, uh, you know, just, this is like a full screen. This is basically a full screen. And there's, if you don't look extremely carefully or loop it, there's very little difference between this and a full frame shot. If you're shooting in the, direct, in the right direction away from the sun and you keep it at 400 with some noise reduction, it's still a very good picture. Um, if you look closely, obviously it's not as good as the bigger sensor cameras. But for a thousand bucks, you can easily get, you know, 650 millimeters of zoom uh, and much more if you can actually manage to get the focus on. So let's actually take another. Uh, picture. This is the geese flying. Now this this condition 
Um, this was later in the day where there wasn't nearly as much light. This is still 400 ISO, but the shutter speed was slightly uh, slower. On um, this one, because there's trees in the background, um, it, and this was actually a much longer focal length. So you can actually see kind of the distance here, uh, how the focal length actually affects things. Now this was actually at 2400 millimeters of uh, zoom. And you can see at that kind of distance, the autofocus isn't as crisp. And even when it locks on, uh, you can definitely see some disparities in the geese. And when you're taking pictures of a group of geese, I also did, I, I forgot exactly which kind of autofocus I used. It was either subject tracking, which would be the wrong one, or uh, manual, fo uh, manual focus. If you actually look at it, I mean, they're not completely in focus. They're generally okay in focus. But what I did notice with the P1000 was when I tried to track groups of geese, it had a pretty hard time focusing on the group as a whole. Much, much worse than my D750 when I use back button autofocus. Um, this is for if, if the geese are, I guess, compact and you're using a, le um, a shorter zoom, I think it's much better. But at over 2000 millimeters in zoom, sometimes it tends to have these problems and the focus honestly isn't that good. But this is still a decent picture. You can tell that there's some noise there. And definitely like the, the the trees and everything it's not the best picture in the world but it's still passable at 2400 millimeters of zoom like if you had a regular 600 millimeter you wouldn't get anywhere near that much detail on the geese um so that is a picture of the geese flying away from you and unfortunately this day i could only shoot kind of the geese flying away because the geese were only flying in one direction and uh to get shoot away from the sun and not get that awful glare you had to kind of shoot the geese while they were flying back unfortunately so that's kind of like 2400 millimeter zoom with the p1000 it's hard to get really good autofocus at 2400 millimeters it really is anything past like i would say half or 1500 it gets really kind of slow so this is the third one this is at 1700 millimeter to 35 millimeter equivalent and this is a turkey vulture now this turkey vulture was way way high up in the air and um this turkey vulture was extremely high up in the air and was fairly far away from me. I could have filled up the screen more if I guess I was just right below it. But like I said, at past 1700 millimeters, it is very, very hard to actually keep any bird, even the ones that are just soaring above, in the frame for very long. So this was, I tried several shots, this was the best one I can get, and then I went on to other birds on the marsh. I will have to say though, birds that are hovering on air currents like turkey vultures and sometimes seagulls, are actually the best to shoot for the P1000 because your shutter speed doesn't really need to be that fast since they're not flapping their wings. And you can actually sort of decrease your ISO if you really, really need to. So definitely Turkey Vulture, pretty good uh, photo overall. Um, I mean, it's still small. I think if I was closer and I tried to get like 3000 zoom, I could almost fill up the screen with a Turkey Vulture. But that's actually very hard to do because yes, this, this does have 3000 millimeter zoom, but the thing is, trying to focus in on something at 3,000 millimeters and keeping it in the frame long enough for the camera to actually acquire focus is a different matter altogether. So I tried for 15 minutes to get like these pictures of these turkey vultures flying far away, and this was the best I could get. Um, and I did have several false shots that didn't end up focusing well because the focusing system of a, a bird against the blue sky, honestly, sometimes this camera does search a lot. So those are those three examples, and uh, we'll look at more wildlife at Horakon Marsh and see what else I could actually come up with. One of the denizens of the marsh are sandhill cranes, more often seen in the fall and perhaps the spring. But sandhill cranes at Horakon Marsh, beautiful, and you will see them flying overhead every once in a while. So this is the sandhill crane in flight that I actually got. This is probably one of my best bird in flight pictures that I actually got with the uh, Nikon uh, P1000. I've gotten much better bird pictures before with my full frame camera, but this is probably the best one I've gotten out of this cycle. I actually went to this marsh for like three straight days, uh, trying to get used to the P1000 for um, birds in flight photography, getting used to the autofocus. And this is probably one of the better shots I got of a sandhill crane in flight. This was only at about 467 millimeters, so you could have done this with a conventional zoom. Obviously, the P1000 is much lighter than a full-frame camera and a giant lens, even though it is a hefty two or three pounds. Um, so this is a sandhill crane in flight, and if you just look at it from here, it's a very good picture, but if you do zoom in, remember this, I do take my bird in flight pictures at ISO 400, 
And uh, if you really look at it here, you can definitely see there is parting of the detail. So this is not really something that you would want to print at ISO 400. I mean, you would be able to, just for like a small desktop print of this size, you would be able to get away with it, but definitely for like a full page picture, you might want to think twice about it. Um, the quality of the image and the noise reduction definitely show through if you magnify it even to this extent. Um, it's It gets, it, like, if you magnify it to here, you really can't tell all that much. But if you magnify it, you know, even past like four or five on this thing, you can actually tell. So definitely not something you want to make a big print of. A small print might be okay, but the overall IQ is not going to be extremely high. For web images, this is perfectly fine. You wouldn't really be able to tell. And once again, this isn't as high of a shutter speed as I would usually take this image. And at 400 ISO, it does kind of, with birds in flight, it does kind of blur some of the detail. Um, so this is a good, this is a pretty decent image, but you can definitely see the head is not completely in focus. Um, or like the noise reduction at 400 ISO, you can see like uh, some of the details being lost in the grass too. So on a good image, you can probably, you can definitely use it to uh, do like, do a, on a report or something, or you can use it on a website uh, or for a very, for a smaller type of print, I think it's okay. But for a larger print, you definitely probably do not want to do one with this camera. You definitely want something with like a D750 or even a one inch sensor. It would provide better image results at ISO 400. So that is the Sandhill crane -ish, uh, picture. And now we're gonna go look at some seagulls I took in flight as well. And then I'll actually look at uh, what the P1, P1000 is good for. It, I'll discuss whether it can actually do birds in flight and uh, what does it actually really shine at in terms of birds. So that um, is the Sandhill Crane picture and let's go look at some seagulls now. We have a few seagulls there and uh, a lot of them are actually taking off landing. So we're gonna see what we can capture in terms of photography of seagulls. So the next three uh, pictures of seagulls we're taking at 35 millimeter equivalents of 12 to 1300 millimeters, which is twice the magnification, more than twice the fact magnification of my Nikon True to Hot 500. As you can see, I got a decent autofocus on the bird this time. I actually used subject, uh, not subject tracking, a manual focus spot for this. And I actually got a decent focus on the bird. And if you see, um, it's 400 ISO and with noise reduction, I actually did need to take the shutter speed back a little bit to get it to be slightly lighter, not as dark. Um, the sun was overhead and I was still sort of putting sort of near the sun, but not really. So that actually gives me some trouble. So you really have to shoot at birds when they're flying kind of really so pretty much away from the sun to get good shots. You can see when you zoom in closer, you can definitely see like some deterioration in the detail there because this is ISO 400 and if you're going to if you're going to reduce noise and especially it's really bad when you get a lot of like the kind of like the the sun in there that's kind of like blowing everything out and then the camera's trying to resolve the detail later it's actually not that great you can definitely see some blowing out of details and stuff and right now this is just not a very good goal picture but if you are shooting with a let's say 2 500 millimeter lens 600 millimeter lens the goal would be only half as big. So you're still getting more gall detail out of this, but you are losing some detail. Um, obviously like a 600 millimeter lens with a 2X teleconverter is better at f4, but you're going to have to be really, really pushing it at that point. Uh, what I mean by really pushing it at that point is that you're really gonna have to be um, forking out some really big bucks to actually do that. And I'm talking like $10,000, $15,000, which the P1000 is $1,000. And you can still like, this is still good enough to use for like a school report. It's just not something that you would print. So getting printable shots on the P1000, while it's possible, it's, it is, it's the possible, it's just not the best tool to do the job with. I have more seagulls here. This is obviously at 1200. This I'm actually shooting more away from the sun. So you can tell what kind of a difference this actually makes when you don't have the sun glare in there. Um, going in, I mean, this does preserve, preserve more detail, but you can tell like the deterioration of the detail as well on the feathers and the wings. Um, I would say like, if you did this, you, 
over the water, like even if you magnified it like that, you get a pretty decent picture. So for, for like smaller prints, I think this would be fine. But for larger prints, like wall prints, you definitely want something better than the P1000 in terms of image quality, especially at 400 ISO. Now, at 100 ISO, you could actually do decent sized prints. However, you're not going to be able to capture like the still motion with birds in flight at 100 ISO, even for the largest birds, because your shutter speed just will not be fast enough. So that's a pretty good picture of a flying seagull. And this was also at uh, 1200 millimeters. And this is another picture of a flying seagull. Um, at 1200 millimeters you can see uh, there was still a little bit of glare from the Sun unfortunately uh, but you can see we still have some detail even if you zoom in you still get some of the detail there is a bit of fading on the detail of the feathers and you can see the bright light kind of glaring around the eye um, on the head so you lose a little there but you still get that good seagull at 1300 millimeters and it's still better than if you just shot with a five 500 millimeter lens and the seagull was half the size in the frame. So a lot of the times the P1000 won't capture the best image, but without it you wouldn't capture any image. It's still not my tool of choice for birds in flight. I have plenty of other lenses and cameras for birds in flight. But it can capture images like this of birds in flight of seagulls. Uh, this one will not go on my site because I have better pictures of seagulls in flight. I've actually been able to get a lot closer to seagulls in flight and just shoot at from 500 <clears throat> with 500 millimeters on my other camera and the image quality is superior to this one um, this is an egret I caught and this is at 800 millimeters of course this isn't full frame I actually cropped out a section of this just for the egret and that's why the um, I actually caught this towards the bottom of the frame so the focus uh, the, the manual spot, spot focus isn't on and it's not completely focused right um, at 800 millimeters even, uh, obviously you can see that um, it is still pretty hard to keep track of something like this in frame. Um, and this is like the full view of what it means to be kind of like shooting towards the sun uh, on a bright sunny day. You can see like the background and even the egret's legs are completely blown out by kind of like the sunshine. And you basically just get the bright white colors of the feathers. Obviously this isn't completely focused right because it's out of center focus. I was just, I, I missed the shot because the egret moved a little too fast and I wasn't able to adjust fast enough. But it's one of the better egret shots I got over the last couple of days. I only saw a couple of flying egrets. Most of them were too far and I tried to focus with 3000 millimeters on them and it did not turn out very well. Because you, if you're going out on a sunny day, you have to, it has to be in the... The egret has to be in the exact right position in relative to you. You can't be shooting towards the sun or like even slanted towards the sun. You have to be shooting kind of away from the sun. And the rest of the shots were kind of like in the other direction. So they were even worse than this. And this was already bad enough. So you can see like with the Nikon P1000, especially on the smaller sensor, the uh, just shooting in the wrong direction with respect to the sun is a lot more consequential than when I do it with like, let's say my um, D750. So that's one of the issues definitely with birds in flight. They have to be in optimal positions. This is a helicopter, and this is actually at about 1,200 as well. Now, I, would, I actually expected the autofocus to pick up on the helicopter pretty easily, but it took a lot longer than I would have thought to pick up the helicopter, and sometimes it didn't stay in focus. So the autofocus for the P1000 on moving objects is definitely not the best, at least not at 1,200. I actually um, noticed that the autofocus is quite fast under six, uh, under about 700. And then after 700, it degrades. Uh, the 700 is a cutoff, and then 1500 is another cutoff. So the good autofocus speed is below 700. The OK autofocus speed is below 1500. And then above 1500, the AF speed is actually pretty slow, regardless of like if you use tracking or if you use like um, manual and uh, spot. So at about 1200 it's really not that fast and I don't think it focused all that well I still think this picture is a little soft so the auto the autofocus system tracking should be something that Nikon will work on if they make an updated version of this camera better autofocus that would make me very very happy much better phase tracking as well that's what I want in the P2000 but I got a decent picture of the helicopter it definitely could have been better 1200 millimeters I mean, obviously, you get a lot more. De uh, you can see the the man inside the helicopter and the helicopter at, at a much bigger rate than with a 500 millimeter camera. But once again, it's it's not the sharpest image in the world, and that's understating it. This is a picture of a gannet in flight, and uh, I definitely don't have the shutter speed fast enough because if I did, I would have to turn up the ISO even more. And um, 
If I did that, uh, it would even be less detailed than it is right now. Gannets are kind of black and they have to shoot um, at the right background. You can even see at ISO 400 and the shutter speed at about 16 or 1250, it's still not fast enough. Like a gannet in the process of taking off, you need 2000, one over 2000 or more. And you can see it being kind of blurry. And you can definitely see some loss of detail here as well. So once again, you know, you're hampered by the small sensor. You can't really do much about that, but you can, this is, I think at 700 millimeters or, or so. So this would be sort of almost the same zoom as like a big long lens. Um, once again, definitely not the perfect tool for shooting birds in flight, unless you, unless you're very, very practiced at this. And even then the noise will actually start to bother you. So I, I did manage to get a couple of shots like this of birds in flight and this, and, uh, mainly a lot of seagulls. Cause there were a lot of seagulls fl uh, flocking around at Horicon Marsh. Um, I failed at shooting a couple of pelicans cause my setup just wasn't ready. The inability to the inability, honestly, to uh, set this button to back button autofocus really bothered me. And I'm just so used to shooting wildlife with this back button autofocus and then pulling the trigger and not being able to do that really screwed me. I definitely de need a little more practice with this and I'll do try to do another rendition or just like a birds in flight gallery example of the P1, <clears throat> sorry, of the P1000, um, probably like next year to see how much I've improved, if I've improved any at all at getting birds in flight with this camera. So birds in flight is not the, this is definitely not the optimal tool. You can definitely get some decent pictures. I would suggest that the pictures, you have to go on bright sunny days. If it's cloudy, you're going to have to set the ISO way up and that's just going to ruin your pictures. You want bright sunny days and you generally want birds that are floating on currents like sometimes seagulls and uh, vultures definitely do. You want like large birds that are kind of landing easily, like pelicans often do, egrets and herons of, often do. And basically birds that fly but are kind of slow. Um, about small birds like finches, robins, cardinals, you can just generally forget it. Trying to catch, you can, trying to catch like a small darting bird across your um, screen and having your autofocus actually focus on that and even if it's already focused, just having the shutter speed fast enough to get a decent picture, not going to happen. The only way you're going, to, unless it's a hummingbird that's just hovering, then you can actually do that. The only way you're going to get like a robin or a finch or a sparrow in flight with a P1000, honestly, is if you just set up uh, next to a bird feeder, wait for the birds to take off and just like basically um, continuous zap the hell out of it. And maybe you'll get a good picture. And actually, that's probably what I'm going to do next year because it's out of the bird feeders are out of season right now. And um, once they're back in season, I will probably spend hours at Horicon Marsh just doing that because I want to see what this thing can actually do and if it can actually do that well on a bright sunny day. So the condition, it has to be a bright sunny day. You have to be shooting away from the sun. And generally, you want to be shooting um, birds that actually float around on currents or even like, you know, seagulls. You can get this one. This one was sort of like landing and it was just kind of like floating landing. So basically like vultures, herons, big, uh, like larger birds, pelicans, seagulls, no smaller birds, unless you're just sitting next to the feeder and birds that don't birds in the stage of flight where they're not flapping their wings a lot. That is what the P1000 can actually do in birds in flight. I will do a revisitation of this topic next year to see if I've gotten any better, but judging from what I've seen online, most birds that the P1000 shoots are not ones in flight. They're stationary birds. And let me, let me just tell you what the P1000 actually shines at. It shines at like photos like this. This is a finch. This is a very, very small finch on an, this is actually like a grass stem. So with my regular zoom, this is actually at 3000 millimeters. With my regular zoom, I would never be able to get this close to the finch. Yes, if you zoom in, you can definitely see some like imperfections with the picture and all that. Um, but honestly, I would never get, be able to get even this much detail with a 500 millimeter lens because this thing would just fly way off before I got this close to it. This is pretty much almost a full screen shot of the finch and the blade of uh, grass. It's at, well, the grass stalk it's actually on. So this is what the P1000 really, really specializes in, um, in terms of uh, photos. This is a an endangered whooping crane that I actually saw. And this is only at 600 millimeters, but... I was able to get pretty good detailed shots without having to lug around a big lens. And this is 
pretty much at 3,000 millimeters, I was able to get extremely good shots of the head, and you can just see the eye. Now, this is actually my bad that I forgot that I was shooting still birds now, so I could actually turn the ISO back down to 100 because I didn't have to have the shutter speed at 1 over like 1,000 anymore. So I should have done that. That's my bad. I probably could have. I probably would have switched the ISO to around 200 because I didn't have a tripod at the time with me. So I needed to extend the barrel out to 3,000. I probably would need to handhold at around like at least 1 over 600 to avoid shake. But I actually forgot to turn the ISO down, and that's my bad. But I still got really good pictures of the endangered whooping crane. You can see the eye very clearly, and I would not be able to do this if I only had 500 millimeters of zoom on my full frame camera, or the 600 millimeters of zoom had I had like an RX-10 IV. Um, and this is like one of the money shots for the day, a very, um, a very detailed, very close up picture of an endangered whooping crane. And I would have not been able to get this picture at all had it not been for the 3000 millimeter of a zoom. This is what this camera specializes in. Like, yes, if you really uh, look in, yes, you do lose a little bit of detail due to the noise reduction, but you can clearly see the eye. You can clearly see like certain details on the crane. And this is really what you're paying for, for the P1000, not really to do birds in flight like this video was about. Although I've got, I, I think I can get uh, pretty decent pictures if I try for a long time. But this is what you're going for, for um, when you're looking about wildlife with a P1000. Very, very close, very, very in-depth. You can actually print this out. Um, this is actually one of the better whooping crane pictures that I've, that I've seen online. This is my picture, by the way. I just took this two days ago. But I haven't found too many uh, close-ups of whooping cranes that are actually better than this from the P1000. This is easily good for a small print-up, maybe even a medium print-up. And that's what you're really going for. With the Nikon P1000, this is what it specializes in. Not really so much the birds in flight, although you can actually do the birds in flight. So that is basically my review of wildlife and birds in flight with the P1000. Yes, you once again, you can do birds in flight, but you have to practice very, very hard. Get used to not really having this back button autofocus with the AFL button. Um, and get used to the slower autofocus, a slower autofocus than you're used to if you're using like if you got used to using like an A7 III or something or an A7R4, and get used to some more noise and using the automatic noise reduction, losing a little bit of detail. Most of the birds in flight pictures that were half decent, I pretty much shot at below 1,000 or slightly above 1,000 anyways. So I was not able to use the full power of the zoom at birds in flight because once again the at at above 2000, the, the autofocus is just really slow, and you have to have extremely steady fall, uh, hands that are able to follow a bird's trail um, for extended amounts of time to let the autofocus actually concentrate on the object. And I'm just not good enough right now to do that with this camera. Maybe I'll be good enough next year, but although this can do birds in flight, it's not the optimal tool for birds in flight, although it is possible for larger birds. For smaller birds, just forget it. All right, that is the review for the P1000 and Birds in Flight. Let me know what you think. Have you been able to take any good pictures of Birds in Flight? And what are your settings for Birds in Flight? Mine, AFF, um, manual autofocus, spot, and that's basically it. All right.